Volkswagen Golf Review. Our rating. 4 star. Combining quality, practicality, and a premium feel, the Volkswagen Golf is one of the most impressive small hatchbacks around. 4. High quality interior, efficient diesel, and petrol engines, very refined. Against. Dull styling, not the sharpest car to drive, rivals have more space inside. For many mainstream car makers, the Volkswagen Golf has been the family hatchback yardstick for years. Seven generations on, and with a facelift introduced in February 2017, the latest model is one of the best offerings in its class. The Golf's strong points include its air of solidity, classy and understated looks, peerless refinement and good performance. It also remains expensive to buy, but it does hold on to its value like no other mainstream family hatchback, so VW is often able to offer it with competitive monthly finance payments. The GTD, GDI, and Storming Golf are cater for the need for excitement. The latest Golf is significantly better to drive than the MK6, because it's based on VW's latest MQB platform, which offers safe handling and excellent ride comfort. It's also decently practical and efficient, and you have a huge choice of engines, including petrol, diesel, hybrid and pure electric options, and a wide range of trim levels. Our choice. Volkswagen Golf 2.0 TDI 150 Match 5 DR. As one of the originators of the hatchback format, the Volkswagen Golf deserves its place in history. What's more remarkable is that the Golf has remained an effective leader in the sector it helped create for 40-odd years, with the latest model helping rivals such as the Vauxhall Astra, Ford Focus, Seat Leon, and BMW 1 Series to stay focused on their game. Even after its facelift, the VW Golf for sale today is not unimprovable, because rivals can beat elements of its performance, whether that be its practicality, style, or driving thrills. None have managed to replicate the Golf's mix of practicality and its hard-won brand image, though even if Dieselgate has latterly rubbed off some of the glitter. The seventh-generation Golf was first introduced in 2013, and then it was updated in spring 2017, with phases of facelift being brought into UK dealerships all the way through until the summer. It is available in three- and five-door hatchback format, as well as an estate. The five-door range is the broadest, and across the range you can pick from five core trim levels. Entry-level S brings body-colored bumpers and side mirrors as standard, along with seat height adjustment for both front occupants, manual air conditioning and an 8-inch touchscreen-based infotainment system that includes a CD player, USB connectivity, Bluetooth, and a DAB radio. Step up to SE and you also get rain-sensing wipers and an auto-dimming rear-view mirror, plus folding door mirrors with puddle lights, adaptive cruise control, 1.6-in alloy wheels in place of the SS15-in steel items, and front and rear parking sensors. Your infotainment system will also include Apple CarPlay and Android Auto compatibility, too. SE navigation is the same as SE, but as its name suggests, it incorporates the Discover navigation software in the same 8-in display. It also brings VW's CarNet, a database service that offers real-time info on everything from the prices of fuel at nearby service stations to the availability of car park spaces. GT adds sportier touches, including LED front fog lights, sports suspension, 17-in alloy wheels and sports seats. It also gets the Discover navigation system and CarNet. Our line takes this look a step further again, with a rear diffuser, a different design of 17-in alloy wheels, stainless steel pedals, and revised front and rear bumpers. Beyond this lineup, the hybrid edition of the Golf, called GTE, gets a couple of trim levels of its own. Regular GTE includes climate control, yet another design of 17-in alloys and LED headlights. But while it does get car net, it doesn't bring navigation, for that you need to plump for GTE Advance, which also swaps the 17-in wheels for 18-in items. The pure electric Golf is badged e-Golf and while its trim level is based upon SE, 
it gets more aerodynamically efficient wheel trims and LED headlights, plus climate control. The eGolf also comes with VW's range-topping Discover Navigation Pro infotainment system, equipped with a high-res 9.2-inch touchscreen. There's a trio of performance-oriented models, the Golf GDI is the original hot hatchback and the latest version packs more pace and agility than ever before. The Golf GTD is the single best-selling variant in the UK, thanks to its mix of diesel running costs, low company car tax bills and sporty styling and handling. And for the extremists, the Golf R packs more than 300 bhp and four-wheel drive. Engines, performance, and drive. 4.6 Star Golfs span every taste, from a mild-mannered shopping car to a fire-breathing hot hatch. The Volkswagen Golf has always delivered high levels of comfort and refinement and the facelift Golf MK7 is no exception. This is particularly true of the new petrol engine that comes as part of the MK7S revisions. It's a 1.5-liter unit producing a hefty 148 bhp, and it is astonishingly refined, indeed, at motorway speeds. Even the Golf's low levels of wind and road noise do become audible, just because the engine has faded so far into the background. Regardless of engine, the Golf is almost ghost-like over bumps, it just glides over them. Progress can be made even more fluid by choosing the adaptive damping system as an option. In addition to the effortless ride, drivers benefit from well-weighted steering, a precise gear shift and strong brakes, while an electronic differential helps deliver sharp turn into corners and extra traction when exiting. Overall the MQB platform offers safe, balanced handling not perhaps the last word in driving excitement, but it's a superb all-round effort. Volkswagen fits all Golf models with more than 118 bhp with a sophisticated multi-link rear axle to help improve handling although in most situations the standard torsion beam setup feels equally composed. With the exception of the 5-speed manual in the entry-level 1.0 edition, the standard gearbox across the Golf range is a 6-speed manual. But one key switch in the 2017 facelift is the phasing out of the old 6-speed dual-clutch DSG automatic in favor of a smoother shifting 7-speed unit across all models. Volkswagen reset the Golf's range at facelift, so at present there are no eco-focused blue motion models. If fun is top of your priority list, then opt for a GTD, GDI, or R version. The GTD offers plenty of torque for effortless overtaking. Don't be fooled by the GTE though, despite the name, it's no hot hatch. It may be faster in a straight line than the GTD, but the added weight means it's not much fun in the corners. True performance fans will be drawn to the flagship R model. Available as a hatchback or an estate, the Golf R gets 308 bhp and four-wheel drive. We haven't tried the facelift version of this car, which has a little more power than its predecessor, but the chassis is likely to remain unchanged, so it should feel very sharp to drive and pack a tremendous amount of grip. However, for most keen drivers, the legendary Volkswagen Golf GDI delivers an ideal mix of performance, value, and fun. Standard cars now get 227 bhp as part of the 2017 facelift, although you can get an extra 15 bhp on top of that, and a limited slip front differential, by choosing the performance pack. The standard setup should be enough for most people, offering a trademark GDI blend of fun performance, agility, and everyday usability. Engines the revised Golf engine lineup is being phased into UK dealers all the way through until summer. Still, a brief chat with your local salesman will reveal that there's a huge range of power plants to choose from, with excellent petrol engines, efficient diesels, a GTE plug-in hybrid and the fully electric e-Golf. The petrol engines are badge TSI and they start as small as a 1.0-liter three-cylinder unit producing just 8.4 bhp, this motor replaces the old 1.2 with the same output. This unit is available in S trim only, though, for a proper choice from the Golf range, you'll need to step up to its more powerful 1.0 sibling, which offers 109 bhp. 
The mid-range petrol engine is a 1.4 with 123 bhp, although in the medium term, this will be replaced by a 1.5 that closes cylinders down to save fuel when they're not needed. The new unit produces a hefty 148 bhp in its initial form, but an eco-focused version, which closes down completely when you're cruising along, almost like a hybrid, will offer 129 bhp and be a more direct swap with the old 1.4. The 2.0 liter power is all reserved for the GDI and R models, with everything from 227 bhp to 308 bhp. On the diesel side, there's a 1.6 with 114 bhp that's available right across the golf range. It's capable enough for most uses, but if you want something with a little more guts, and a little less noise, VW offers a 2.0 producing 148 bhp and barely any more CO2 emissions. There's also a potent 181 bhp 2.0, but it's reserved for the GTD editions. The GTE plug-in hybrid mixes a 1.4 liter petrol and an electric motor for a combined output of 201 bhp, while the e-Golf has been given a more efficient battery as part of the 2017 facelift, so it can now travel around 180 miles on a single charge. MPG, CO2 and running costs. 4.4 star. Advanced engine tech means most versions in the Golf range are very efficient, offsetting the high initial purchase cost. Volkswagen has ensured that the Golf is very easy on the wallet so much so that even the racy 2.0 liter GDI returns an impressive 44.1 with CO2 emissions of 148 G/km. If you're after properly frugal motoring, though, then it's good to know you can choose between either the 1.0 liter petrol with 109 bhp or the 114 bhp 1.6 diesel and still have CO2 emissions of less than 110 g/km and that's regardless of whether your gearbox is a manual or a DSG automatic of course there should be a golf with less than 100 g/km of CO2 emissions and we expect a blue motion variant later this year that will achieve that feat in the meantime the gutsy new 1.5 liter unit with 148 bhp isn't bad at avoiding the pumps either its cylinder deactivation technology means it returns a claimed 55.4 mpg and CO2 emissions of just 116 g/km. VW has yet to release precise data on the facelift version of its Golf GTE Hybrid or the revised e-Golf, but we do know that the latter vehicle will now travel around 180 miles between charges, not bad when a full fill on a domestic socket costs less than a cup of coffee. Insurance Groups we're still awaiting finalized insurance groups for the revised Golf. But the entry-level version of the old car, the 1.2, sat in Group 70, and we'd expect the new baseline to be equally competitive. Move up to a GT or R-line model and you'll typically be looking at between 170 and 190. High-powered models are pricier, with the GTD at 260, the GDI from 290 and the R at 340. Depreciation. With very high demand among used car buyers, Golfs do hold onto their value well. Our experts predict the Golf will still be worth an impressive 48.2% of its new value after 3 years and 36,000 miles, which is better than almost any other rival. Interior, Design, and Technology. 4.1 Star. It may not look or feel very exciting, but the Golf is well made and well equipped. Its new infotainment system can be fiddly, though. There's no denying that the latest Volkswagen Golf can't quite match the Mazda 3 or Seat Leon for head-turning appeal. But what the Golf lacks in the wow factor department, it more than makes up for in cool Teutonic understatement. The Golf manages to pull off the neat trick of looking both classless and classy. The facelift version of the 7th generation car may not appear overly different to previous versions, but key visual tweaks include a bold crease cut into the body flanks, which gives it a low, sporty stance. However, it's the interior of the Golf that really impresses. The wraparound dash looks a little plain, but look closer and you'll see Volkswagen has laid it out intuitively and put it together using first-rate materials. Soft touch plastics feature throughout, 
and any extra trim on the center console is of a high enough grade to look classy, not kitsch. Better still, the switch gear in the Golf operates with precision and the car's low-slung driving position is one of the best in the business. It's also a pleasant surprise to find that the flat-looking seats are surprisingly supportive. The Golf's understated looks aren't particularly helped by the entry-level Golf S having steel wheels and plastic rims. However, move slightly higher up the range and things get better quickly. SE brings 16-inch alloy wheels, plus chrome effect flourishes on the air vents and light switches, and brushed dark silver inserts in the dashboard and door panels. You get more chrome effect in GT, as well as chunkier 17-inch alloys, and our line brings decorative inserts in the dash and door panels, along with a different design of 17-in wheel and trapezoidal exhaust pipes. SAT NAV, Stereo and Infotainment This is where choosing a facelift Golf could really pay off, because even S-Spec editions get an 8-in touchscreen infotainment system as standard, that's very impressive for the class. Just bear in mind that this setup, called Composition Media, won't contain navigation, and you won't be able to hook up Apple CarPlay or Android Auto unless you choose an SE or above. SE Navigation and GT bring VW's Discover Navigation as standard, it uses the 8IN screen to deliver Europe-wide mapping. It also brings CarNet, a database service which offers real-time updates on fuel prices in your local area, or where parking spaces are available. The range-topping setup in the Golf is called Discover Pro, but while its core hardware is impressive, with an ultra-crisp 9.2-inch touchscreen, the interface itself is badly flawed. That's because Discover Pro does away without the physical shortcut keys down either side of the screen, and you can't use a dial to zoom in and out either. You end up pressing on-screen buttons to move between core functions, and if you're in the navigation, you have to pinch to zoom as if you're using a smartphone. The whole setup is fiddly to use on the move, and VW's much-hyped gesture control, which also comes as part of Discover Pro, is equally flawed, being unreliable to the point of worthless. At least you won't have any problem getting the sounds you want coming through the speakers. A DAB radio is standard on even the S models, along with Bluetooth and USB connectivity, and a single CD player. On a more positive note, VW's active info display was made available on the Golf as part of its spring 2017 facelift. This is a 12.3-inch screen that replaces the traditional instrument dials with a more configurable, adjustable interface. It's crystal clear and has smooth animations as moves items around to prioritize either basic driving data or navigation info. It's not a cheap option, but we can see why many will tick the box. Practicality, Comfort, and Boot Space 4.5 Star Decent space inside the cabin and the boot make the Golf a solid family car choice. We're looking at the regular Golf hatchback in this review, although if you need extra practicality from your Golf, it's also offered in MPV-style SV and 5-door estate body steels. While the Golf might not have class-leading interior space, it's hardly a significant flaw. In both 3-door and 5-door formats, Volkswagen's Golf hatchback ticks all the important boxes, it's got plenty enough space for 5 passengers and the capacious boot has a practical shape, too. Visibility is better than most hatchbacks in its class, as well. Size The Golf seems to grow with each successive generation, and the MK7 is 150mm longer, 13mm wider and 4mm lower than the MK6. But it's still far from the being a huge car by class standards, it's more compact in every measure than the current Ford Focus, for example. Leg room, headroom and passenger space. There's loads of space up front, while rear passengers get plenty of head and leg room. The wide, Flat rear seat can take three people without too much of a squeeze, although the center passenger may find things a bit uncomfortable on longer journeys. Getting in and out is a simple matter, especially with the five-door, and child seats are easy to fit in the back using either the car's seat belts or ISO fix. 
Volkswagen has given the Golf lots of handy storage spaces, including a deep cubby under the front armrest between the driver and front passenger, a large air-conditioned glove box and numerous cup holders. Buyers also benefit from vast door bins that are flock-lined to stop their contents from rattling around noisily on the move. Boot As ever, the large VW boot badge doubles as the tailgate release and opening it reveals a well-shaped 380-liter boot. Better still, there's a wide opening and low load lip, while below the adjustable height false boot floor provides a handy hidden storage area. If you need more room, you can liberate a generous 1,270 liters of capacity by folding the 60,40 rear seats. The load platform is usefully flat, too. Useful additions to the load space include a 1-2V power supply and a pair of bag hooks, plus there's a ski flap for longer items. Of course, those looking for even more practicality can opt for the estate model with a capacious 605 liter boot that expands to 1,620 liters with the rear seats folded flat. The all-track version retains this practicality, but adds a raised ride height and four-wheel drive for added versatility. It's worth noting that the e-Golf and GTE are slightly less practical, because their batteries are mounted under the boot floor. As a result, the e-Golf gets a 343-liter load bay, while the hybrid GTE shrinks to 272 liters. That's still a very usable amount of space, but you do sacrifice any form of underfloor storage. Most Golfs can be used for towing, the exceptions are the e-Golf, GTE and R. Depending on model, the maximum unbrake towing capacity varies between 600 kg and 670 kg, while the brake figure ranges from 1,100 kg to 1,600 kg. Reliability and Safety 4.2 Star Top-notch safety is a big plus point, but the Golf may not be quite as reliable as VW would have you imagine. VW has always played heavily on its reputation for building durable and reliable cars, so the brand's 22nd place result in our Driver Power 2015 satisfaction survey may be seen as something of a disappointment. Still, the Golf MK7 comes in at a creditable 30th place overall in the Driver Power survey, and Golf owners responding to the survey have been keen to praise their car's build quality, performance, comfort, and handling. Certainly the Golf exudes an air of being built like a tank. The shut lines are consistent and narrow, the quality of the materials is high throughout and there is a pleasing lack of squeaks and rattles. Further peace of mind comes in the form of the VW's strong safety record. All cars get seven airbags, including driver's knee airbag, while the five-star Euro NCAP rating is impressive, especially the 94% rating for adult occupant protection. Standard safety gear across the range include an electronic parking brake with auto hold function, electronic tire pressure monitoring, stability control, front passenger airbag deactivation and hydraulic brake assist. All but entry level S editions get front assist, which now incorporates city emergency braking and pedestrian detection. Safety options include lane assist with side scan, blind spot monitoring and dynamic light assist, park assist, and rear side airbags. Deals Latest VW Golf hatchback deals, save from £3,526. Warranty VW's 3-year, 60,000-mile warranty is about average by industry standards, although you can extend it, at extra cost, up to a maximum of 5 years or 90,000 miles. Servicing The service schedule for the Golf is every 12 months or 10,000 miles, whichever is the sooner. Fixed price servicing is available from VW dealers, although VW doesn't offer the sort of low-cost all-in servicing package that many rival manufacturers do, so costs are likely to end up being higher than some competitors.